My personal experience with microwaves started about 18 years ago when we performed experiments using microwave ablation in animal models in swine and in rats and now we have personal experience in about more than four years and with a special focus on liver, lung and soft tissue cancer. The patient was a young patient from China, was suffering from a fibrosarcoma and he had a new liver metastasis and a lung metastasis and today we treated the lung metastasis a very small one and uh, the patient had been operated before so that was the decision why we performed microwave ablation. I think the intervention itself went smoothly, the patient did not develop pneumothorax, uh, pain was tolerable and the procedure time also was very low. We use local anesthesia uh, and uh, use a mild sedation mostly with some uh, diazepam or some other drugs. Um, I personally I'm not a friend of general anesthesia because for me, it's not controllable. Um, the interaction between the patient and the doctor, the interaction between pain, local complications is better if I have the patient uh, conscious. Our tumor board on lung cancer and lung metastasis, um, we have a variety of therapy options. So in our board, we always discuss the use of uh, systemic chemotherapy, in our institutions, we are using microwave ablation if patients have tumors uh, with a number less or equal to 3 on one side of the lung and a size lower than 3 cm. A patient in a good clinical situation normally is scheduled to be there for one day. So it's an outpatient procedure. Uh, I would say about 95% of the patients are leaving the hospital the same day. In the lung we have nearly abandoned uh, radiofrequency ablation because our uh, microwave ablation is faster, it's more precise, we see less complications, we see less bleeding and less hemorrhage, less pneumothorax. The second case uh, was more challenging, a um, patient uh, 65 years old, colon cancer, lung metastasis, um, a patient with a low thrombocytes, also a high risk for bleeding. The surgeons refused to operate him and this was why we decided to perform the ablation. Uh, we had been using microwave, the Covidian system and thanks God we didn't have a bleeding because we had been able to directly hit the tumor. So a very complex maneuver and I think um, looking at the end of the procedure we, we found an um, excellent disintegration of the cancer and here I would say the the local control rate is at least more than 95% of the tumor. And the patient will hopefully, if everything works out, will leave today the hospital and will be, uh, have a normal life tomorrow. So.
selection criteria is the length of the probe, location of the needle, adjacent vessels. Here we had used a single antenna in both patients. Uh, if, the, if in the last patient the tumor would have been bigger, maybe we would have used two antennas. Procedure on table time was uh, um, about 45 minutes. Ablation time itself, 10 up to 20 minutes. That's our regular purpose. So in our working flow, we treat normally in an ablation day, we treat uh, about six, eight, up to 10 patients. Um, our recent publication in lung metastasis could show, first of all, that this is a safe procedure, that we are able to achieve in more than 80% <coughs> of the patient a good local control, and we defined risk factors for lesions where maybe microwave is not sufficient or where we use, have to use other techniques. In principle, solid tumors, independent on their location, can be treated. The major focus will be still the liver, it will be the lung, uh, will be soft tissue, and will be recurrent cancer, for example, in the pancreas, or recurrent cancer in breast tissue, recurrent cancer in the small pelvis.